While the world debates offshore wind, lithium batteries, and smart grids, China, quietly but relentlessly, has poured tens of billions of USD into a different path. Next generation nuclear power. While the West, particularly the US, grapples with over budget and delayed nuclear projects on China's southern coast, a colossal endeavor is taking shape, the Lianjiang nuclear power plant. This is not just a power generation facility, it is a strategic declaration, a symbol of carbon neutral ambition, and a signal to Washington that China refuses to play the follower. Lianjiang is not located in major industrial hubs like Shanghai or Shenzhen. It sits near the South China Sea, a choice far from coincidental. There, waves don't just lap against sandy shores, they touch the geopolitical undercurrents of the Asia-Pacific. And now those waves also cool the tallest nuclear cooling towers ever built in China. In a post-pandemic world where energy is the key to economic stability and strategic positioning, whoever controls clean energy infrastructure controls the future. And with Lianjiang, China is playing a high-stakes game, not in the marketplace, but on the global power map. Join Top 10 Discoveries official as we unveil this project, where technology, ambition, and geopolitics converge into a statement of immense weight. Among the global wave of green transition, China has not chosen a slow and steady path. They have opted for scale, high technology, and astonishing construction speed. Among the dozens of nuclear projects underway, the Lianjiang Nuclear Power Plant in Guangdong Province stands out as a new symbol of technical, economic, and strategic ambition. Located in Chaibin Town, Lianjiang City, near the South China Sea coast, this project is funded and executed by the State Nuclear Power Technology Corporation, SNPTC, with technical support from the Shanghai Nuclear Engineering Research and Design Institute, SNERDI, and key industrial partners like Shanghai Electric, which manufactures the 271-ton reactor pressure vessel. In total, six CAP-1000 reactors will be built here, each with a nominal capacity of 1,250 megawatts, delivering a net output of 1,160 to 1,224 megawatts. CAP-1000 is a localized and upgraded version of the AP-1000 technology developed by Westinghouse US, classified as Generation 3 Plus, a technology expected to shape the future of nuclear power post-Fukushima. The project's first phase was approved by China's State Council in September 2022, with groundbreaking commencing shortly after. Unit 1 began concrete pouring on September 29, 2023, a process completed in just 53 hours, showcasing exceptional construction efficiency. Unit 2 broke ground on April 26, 2024, and swiftly proceeded with the installation of Super Modules CA-20, October 11, 2024, and CA-01, January 1, 7, 2025. CA-01, weighing nearly 1,100 tons and over 26 meters long, is among the largest components ever installed in a Chinese civilian nuclear project. The total cost for the entire plant is estimated at 130 billion yuan, approximately 18.1 billion US dollars. The first two reactors alone account for about 5.6 billion US dollars. Upon completion, the project will achieve a capacity exceeding 7,000 megawatts, with an annual output estimated at 70.2 terawatt hours of electricity, enough to power over 6 million industrial and residential users, while reducing consumption of over 20 million tons of standard coal and cutting more than 52 million tons of CO2 annually. Other pollutants like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide will also see significant reductions, approximately 171,000 tons and 149,000 tons per year respectively, contributing significantly to China's carbon neutrality goal by 2060. What makes Lianjiang pioneering is its status as China's first nuclear plant to employ ultra-large cooling towers combined with secondary seawater circulation technology. This system ensures efficient cooling while minimizing direct heat discharge into the ocean, 
addressing a globally debated issue regarding thermal impacts on marine ecosystems. In terms of timeline, Lianjing is progressing on a rolling schedule. Unit 1 is expected to connect to the grid in 2028, while Units 3 to 6 have been announced but not yet started. Overall, the plan is likely to be fully completed around 2035, aligning with Beijing's ambitious nuclear energy expansion strategy, aiming to build six to eight new reactors annually from 2020 to 2030. Beyond serving clean energy goals, Lianjiang is a strategic chess piece in reducing reliance on imported oil and gas, providing stable baseload power for fast-growing industrial regions like Guangdong and reinforcing China's Made in China nuclear technology on the global export map. If older generation nuclear power plants were associated with sluggishness, delays, and safety concerns, Lianjiang is China's resounding counter-argument. This is not merely an energy project. It is an industrial-scale laboratory where the most advanced nuclear technologies are tested, applied, and standardized. At the heart of the system is the KP-1000 reactor, a localized upgrade of the AP-1000 line developed by Westinghouse, U.S. While based on traditional pressurized water reactor PWR technology, CAP-1000 is Generation 3+, incorporating significant advances in passive safety and modular design. Unlike older reactors relying on external power for cooling systems, CAP-1000 uses natural convection and water evaporation, enabling core cooling for days without external power, even in a complete blackout scenario. The reactor vessel is not fused to the protective concrete layer, creating a natural convection space that allows water to condense and circulate continuously for cooling, even in case of a heat leak. With this design, each CAP-1000 reactor at Lianjing delivers a net output of 1,160 to 1,220 megawatts, and the plant's total annual output could exceed 70 terawatt hours, equivalent to the electricity consumption of a small nation. However, what sets Lianjiang apart lies beyond the reactor core, its ultra-large cooling towers, the first deployed in a Chinese nuclear power plant. Unlike most prior Chinese coastal nuclear plants, which use direct seawater cooling, Lianjiang employs a circulating cooling model with cooling towers, minimizing direct heat discharge into the ocean. With Guangdong's coastal waters hosting high biodiversity and sensitivity to thermal changes, this is a groundbreaking step in environmental strategy, affirming that nuclear power, if designed correctly, can align with ecological sustainability. Beyond the core and cooling towers, modular construction technology is the third factor accelerating progress in reducing costs at Lianjiang. Massive modules like CA01, over 26 meters long, 29 meters wide, 24 meters tall, and weighing over 1,000 tons, or CA2020 meters long, are assembled on site using super heavy cranes instead of traditional piece by piece construction. Installing a CA-01 module took just three hours and 18 minutes, an unprecedented record in Chinese civilian nuclear construction. Inside CA-01 lies the entire core system, from the reactor vessel to steam generators and heat exchange equipment. Prefabrication and on-site assembly not only speed up progress, but also enhance quality through tighter control over each manufacturing stage, significantly reducing errors from complex manual construction. Combining three technological pillars, highly safe CAP-1000 reactors, eco-friendly cooling towers, and smart modularization. Lianjing is not just a technical leap, but a leap in mindset. Instead of copying Western models, China is creating its own technology ecosystem, deeply localizing and standardizing the nuclear supply chain. No longer reliant on Westinghouse CAP-1000 reactors are now designed in Shanghai, manufactured at Shanghai Electric Factories, and installed by CNNC's construction teams, an entirely made-in-China process from start to finish. Of course, as with any nuclear technology, concerns remain. Despite superior safety designs, any errors in waste management, equipment maintenance, or environmental monitoring could lead to serious consequences. Neighboring countries like Vietnam have previously requested China to regularly share information on safety and discharge, a necessity in the post-Fukushima era where transparency is an integral part of regional security. 
However, evaluating purely on technology and implementation progress, Lianjiang demonstrates that China is not just building nuclear power plants. They are redefining how a nuclear power plant should be built in the 21st century. Is the Lianjiang nuclear power plant merely an energy project serving China's domestic needs? Or is it a sophisticated technology showroom designed to promote the globalization of China's nuclear industry? Behind the cap, 1,000 reactors being installed at Lianjiang lies a clear industrial strategy, turning nuclear power into a flagship export industry. CAP-1000 is not just a derivative of the U.S.'s AP-1000 technology. It is a declaration that China can improve, master, and localize one of the planet's most complex technologies. According to reports from the State Nuclear Power Technology Corporation, SNPTC, CAP-1000's localization rate now exceeds 80%, with a supply chain spanning nuclear materials, steam generators, control equipment, and modular construction techniques. This is the key factor enabling China to confidently commercialize next-generation reactors globally, no longer dependent on Western components or patents. A further step is Hualong-1, HPR-1000, also known as CAP-1400, an expanded version of CAP-1000 already exported to Pakistan. The Karachi project K2-K3 is operating stably, and China is negotiating with numerous countries under the Belt and Road Initiative BRI, including Argentina, Egypt, South Africa, and even Turkey. In 2024, China announced a special 20 billion USD credit package to support BRI partners in purchasing its reactors, a move likened to Huawei-izing the nuclear power industry. Meanwhile, the U.S. and the West are betting on small modular reactors, SMRs like NuScale, but face challenges with escalating costs and prolonged licensing. China takes a different path, building big, building in series, and offering attractive financing to capture global market share. From a geopolitical perspective, Lianjing is not just a power plant. It is a link in a strategy to expand technological and energy influence. Each CAP-1000 reactor successfully installed abroad not only generates revenue, but also creates decades-long infrastructure, technical, and political dependencies. This is a new kind of soft power, powered by neutrons instead of bullets. With the construction of six CAP-1000 reactors at Lianjiang, China is sending a clear message. They not only master the technology, but are ready to export it as part of a new global energy order. Suppose one day an incident occurs at Lianjiang. What would happen? Would bustling coastal cities like Zhangjiang, or farther afield, Hong Kong, Manila, or even the northern seas of Vietnam be at risk? This is the question many in the West ask when they hear the phrase Chinese nuclear power. But here China once again demonstrates they are not just following to learn, they are leading to master the safety game. Let's start with technical data. CAP 1000, the reactor technology used at Lianjing is among the safest generation 3 plus reactors today, with a passive cooling system requiring no electricity or human intervention. The reactor can self cool for 72 hours after a complete power loss, a capability older reactors like Fukushima never achieved. Even if all electronic systems fail, gravity and natural convection alone keep the system operational greatly reducing the risk of core meltdown. The worst case scenario, a severe incident at Lianjiang, has been simulated by Chinese experts, factoring in monsoon wind dispersion, coastal currents, and population density. Conclusion, the direct impact radius would not exceed 30 kilometers, thanks to the containment structure design and layered emergency control protocols. Compared to Fukushima, where radioactive leaks spread beyond 100 kilometers, this is a post-disaster leap forward. China has also heavily invested in real-time radiation warning and monitoring systems. Each plant is connected to a national data center capable of responding within 15 minutes of detecting anomalies, far faster than IAEA standards. Additionally, the integration of artificial intelligence for early anomaly detection is being tested at Lianjiang, reducing risks from human error, the primary cause of most past nuclear incidents. And finally, what sets China apart? 
They refuse to be reactive. Lianjiang is not an isolated project. It is a strategic defensive wall surrounded by layers of legal, technical, and societal oversight. In an increasingly unstable energy world where climate change, power shortages, and geopolitical tensions are rising risks, China is proving they can not only build fast, but build safely, responsibly, and to shape a new energy order. Behind the colossal cooling towers at Lianjing, what is truly evaporating is not just water, but the West's monopoly on nuclear technology. And if there is one nation closely watching China's every move at this plant, it is the United States. For decades, the U.S. held a central role in the global nuclear technology supply chain and development. Reactors from Westinghouse, General Electric, or Bechtel were once the technical gold standard. But now a paradox is unfolding. The AP-1000 technology developed by the U.S. is being improved, localized, and commercialized by China under the name CAP-1000. And Lianjiang is living proof of this. In Washington, this is not just a technological issue. It is a strategic warning signal. A nation capable of mass-producing safe, affordable nuclear reactors with generous BRI financing is effectively reshaping the global energy power balance. From Pakistan to Argentina, from Egypt to Hungary, China is no longer buying reactors. It is selling them. And that is something the U.S. cannot ignore. Responses are taking shape. And in March 2025, the U.S. Department of Energy announced an accelerated SMR program and proposed a 12 billion U.S. dollar funding package to keep allies from nuclear penetration by China. Simultaneously, Canada, Japan, and the EU are strengthening cooperation in non-Chinese nuclear fields, a clear move to counter the influence of projects like Lianjiang. But what gives China the edge is not just technology, it is rapid and efficient execution. While many Western SMR projects remain on paper or face delays, like New Scale in Utah, postponed indefinitely. At Lianjiang, in just 18 months, China has poured concrete, erected reactors, installed massive modules, and is preparing for operations by 2028. Lianjiang's development is thus not just a domestic achievement, it is a power statement. China can design, build, and is ready to reshape the rules of the game in the global nuclear market. And in this new game, the U.S. faces a rival no longer trailing, but speeding ahead in its own lane. From the first concrete port in Chaban Town to the massive CA-01 modules installed with centimeter precision, Lianjiang is not just a nuclear power plant. It is a symbol of a new China, proactive, modern, and assertive in strategic technology. In a world transforming under climate crises and fossil fuel depletion, nuclear power is no longer a luxury. It is the inevitable solution. And while much of the West grapples with costs, policies, and public opinion, China has quietly built an empire of reactors, with Lianjiang as a key brick in that strategy. From reducing emissions by over 52 million tons of CO2 annually, to modular construction accelerating progress, to ambitions of exporting CAP-1000 globally, Lianjiang exemplifies a different approach, pragmatic, technocratic, and geopolitically ambitious. And now the question is no longer, can China lead, but who will keep up? If this analysis has opened a new perspective on nuclear energy, don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. Will Lianjiang change the global game? Should the U.S. respond differently? And if you want to keep exploring massive infrastructure projects and strategic moves the world is watching, join Top 10 Discoveries Official to dive deeper into stories not everyone tells.